This is FX Radio and I'm Andrew Whitfield-Cook. And with me in the studio today is two young, lovely young ladies who recently completed the Bioceuticals Internship. So I'd like to f- welcome to the studio Rachel and Shannon. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for having us. <laughs> so let me first get uh, a little handle on where you're from, what, what your background is. So Shannon, can you tell me just a little bit about your experience? Yes, yeah, so um, for the past four years, I've been studying naturopathy um, at Endeavour College. Mm-hmm. And I, from the moment I started studying natural medicine, I just knew that I was on my path. Um, of course, it's a growing industry mm-hmm. and, you know, it's our roots. It's where medicine comes from. It's, you know, and it's so wonderful to be learning about it and going back there and, yeah, it's taken me on a real big journey, and, and this internship was definitely part of it. So. Great. Hi, I'm Rachel. <laughs> and, um, yeah, as far as my background, um, prior to studying naturopathy and nutritional medicine, mm. I worked in the arts sector. So originally I um, studied visual arts, a bit of theatre, um, worked in advertising, marketing, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So a completely different field. But um, I think I just got to that point where I really wanted to – make a positive change in the world through a different medium and uh, complementary medicine seemed like an amazing path. So what attracted you to natural medicine? Well, I think it's this idea that, you know, we can heal our bodies through our own innate healing mechanisms and through a healthy diet and lifestyle. And I think just in this world where we live where there's so much prescription and diagnosis happening, it's an opportunity to um, to really empower people. Mm. And my, (laughs) my underlying philosophy really is to help the world by helping people, empower them with health and uh, help, you know, hopefully they can turn around and do their bit as well. Yeah, yeah. And Shannon, what, what was your attraction to natural medicine? Did mm. you did you study it from, direct from, directly from school? No, no. I think I, for me, I finished school and I was very unsure of what I wanted to do. Um, kind of tiptoed through a whole bunch of different industries as in advertising for a while, mm. as in sales. Um, I worked in health food stores. Um, but for me, I was always very interested in science, but also spirituality mm-hmm. and um, very, you know, nature and biology. And, and I found when I came across a Bachelor of Health Science in natural medicine, it was the perfect fusion of two things that I really loved. Wow, and, okay. and so, yeah, I think that's really what got me going with that one. <laughs> <laughs> and so what... How did you first hear about the Bioceuticals Internship Program? What went through your mind when you first heard about it? Can you remember where you were when, when Elvis died? <laughs> Can you remember where you were when you heard about it? What were your thoughts? So um, I received an email from Bioceuticals, mm-hmm. and it was actually one of those moments where I do feel like I just happened to notice, like I was skimming through and I thought, wow, oh, my goodness, I had no idea that in this field, because I think... As naturopath and nutrition students, we often feel like there are only opportunities to work in a clinical environment, whereas an internship was a, an amazing way to see, you know, yeah, things created, actual products and so on. Mm-hmm. So as far as what went through my mind, I thought, yep, I've got to take this opportunity because, you know, I changed my career in, as well because I wanted more variety yeah. in my life. Yep. And so, you know, um, I thought this is a great way to learn about something that I won't learn in my my formal training. Right. And Shannon? Yeah, and so for me, I think um, I'm a seeker of experience as well. And um, my whole life, I've really seen the benefits of putting ourselves out there to firsthand experience things. And um, I came across the internship really just on a good old Google search of internships or work experience in the natural health industry. And when I saw it, it was perfect because um, what it offered really was insight into the natural health industry that was away from just practice. So, so it, what were you looking for, though, when you were doing the Google search? I literally was looking for internships really? or work experience in the natural health industry. Yeah. Serendipity at its best. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> you know, and, and sometimes you just read something and you just know it's supposed to be. Yeah. 
So, yeah. And Rachel, what were your initial thoughts? What was your, your, your first step when you, when you got the email? What did, yes, like heck yeah, or <laughs> was it mullet over for a while? What, what were your thoughts? I think it was actually, no, I've got to do this. Mm-hmm. I've, I've got to apply, got to give it a go. I mean, I had hesitations because I'm doing an advanced diploma of naturopathy. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, hey, I'm going to be up against those bachelor people. You mm-hmm. know, they're all going to be that one step ahead. But, um, yeah, but I thought, no, you've, you know, you've just got to go for these things. So I was pretty enthusiastic from the word go. Great. And Shannon, you've Googled it. You're looking yeah. for it. There it is. What was your next step? What did you do? How um, did you apply? Well, basically, I put a lot of thought into my cover letter and what I really wanted to get out of an internship program. And I guess I just applied and I had my fingers crossed because I just knew that it was going to be a completely valuable experience. And again, you know, as as fearful, I was nervous. I thought there are probably some incredible people applying for such a profound internship, especially being the very first internship offered to students in the naturopathic sector. Um, But yeah, it was exciting as well. And I knew that because I was following my passion and what I loved, I, you know, I would be happy with whatever outcome. And so now we progress. You've got the call. Your feelings were I would hope one of elation, <laughs> but what was it like then transferring to the first day? What was your first day like? Was it, oh, heck, what am I in for? Or was it total excitement or a mixture of both? What were you in? Um, oh, I was so excited. Um, and I guess meeting um, all the other interns, Shannon, Tracy and Marie Louise, such a beautiful group of, of young women. And um, we all clicked immediately. So I think that was just, okay, these are my comrades throughout this. And then we're welcomed with, you know, the HR and taken through the whole um, bicycles building mm-hmm. and introduced. And we really were made welcome. I feel like we weren't just these sort of anonymous faces passing through. We mm. were like, these are the interns, so welcome them. And we did feel welcome. So I think that any kind of hesitation or nervousness that I might have felt was really gone within the first probably 15 minutes of mm. arriving. Oh, great. Yep. And Shannon? Mm. Um, yeah, I think at first I felt like we were walking in blindly. We had no idea what to expect. We <laughs> you didn't were. Know, yeah, well, we, you know, we, we didn't know what the people were going to be like. We didn't know what the company was going to be like. But from day one, I know that we all instant at the end of the day, we were all like, oh, my God, we're so excited. Everyone's great. And I think, yeah, just everyone was so welcoming and we learned so much in that first day that we knew that the next two months was just going to be an incredible incredible ride i, I gotta say you've you've no idea about how excited we were about finding you <laughs> <laughs> um you know there, there are some good applicants and um to be chosen you really were the the cream of the crop sort of thing so you know we were very excited about meeting you guys and and showing you through the the various processes and steps um, which you undertook, and we'll, we'll delve into that now. So, along that way, along the way, what what did you learn that you had absolutely no idea that you would be ex- exposed to at the beginning of the internship? What did you learn along the way and come out with? Um, I think for me, one of the biggest things I learned was what an integral part each each particular area plays in the production of a new product how from education to marketing to um, the product development to regs how you know it's this this constant um, interlinking wave that creates that you know makes a product come to life Mm. Um, and in saying that as well I just also learned how many options are out there for students um, who don't maybe don't want to practice you know if you have a marketing degree or an arts degree or you do education or you have passions for other things but you know you still do naturopathic medicine you can come into a company like Bioceuticals and you can fit perfectly as well and I might just backtrack a little bit uh, Rachel yeah. um, For the listeners, can you take the listeners through the process of what you did learn from day one to the end? (laughs) I guess it's just seeing the the whole picture because when a new product comes on the shelf and we we walk into a shop, we don't really think about what's actually gone into it. And so being able to see what makes up a company. So when we started, we, we saw every single aspect of the entire company of Bioceuticals. 
And so I think we started with education and, and obviously working with closely with that team and learning about how important they feel it is to educate practitioners. So they're not just handing out a product and saying, just use it as you wish. Mm. It's like, no, understand how this works, understand the yeah, physiology and, and all the pharmacokinetics and whatnot. Yep. Um, we also worked with the, um, the customer service team and they were amazing um we went on the road we actually got to work with the sales team mm-hmm. and visit practitioners and um and stores and so on we also worked with product development that was extremely technical and uh, that was probably the most challenging part i mm-hmm. mean that was where we really got our academic brain on and um yeah pushed our limits a little bit but it was excellent so rachel i'll continue with you so you said that you know it's not just a, a thing about making a product and here you go out on the market, that there's, there's actually a heck of a lot of responsibility with that. And this is um, under the umbrella of the regulations that we work within in the Australian industry, um, which is governed by the Therapeutic Goods Administration. So w- did you ever feel that you were held back by those regulations? And what did you learn about the meaningfulness of restrictions placed on natural products? Yeah, look, the restrictions were, it was a learning curve because, you know, we know um, naturopathy is a perfect example of where anecdotal evidence is the foundation really of, of our practice because it, we've been using these plants and herbal medicines for centuries, if mm-hmm. not longer, probably millennia. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so these rules and regulation now, they come in to, to really give parameters to, um, to what people can say. And I feel as much as it was difficult because we had to find very specific information to really support our claims. and um, But at the same time, I, I, I think it's really important because there are a lot of products. And in fact, since doing the internship, I've I've been so much more critical of products and seen a lot that I think, where's where's the evidence to back that up? How on earth have they made that claim? Mm. So yeah, it is, it's, I think it's in challenging, but it's so important. So yeah. Mm. I think, uh, you know, one of the sad travesties of, of our industry, if you like, is that you do get these people, for instance, like SensorSlim, which are able to put a, a product out there, which is the biggest load of cock on <laughs> um, I'll, I'll always remember when I saw the ad in the paper, I went, oh, really? 100,000 a, a people in the study? Mm. Really? 100,000? <laughs> they don't get that in <laughs> the biggest cardiovascular trial. So it was a real eye-opener. I phoned up and there was no, no response. For it. So, Shannon, over to you. Um, Talk to me about what you learned about regulations and restrictions and the, and the reason behind those. Mm, so I think just going on of what Rachel said, definitely learned uh, what an integral role research and evidence plays um, in the formulation of a product and how important it is to look at specific clinical trials to make uh, certain statements um, about the product. And um you know, what a blessing in disguise it really is because it can be really difficult mm. when you're trying to formulate a product and you know what it's able to do to then try and make a claim about it. Um, so mm, I think Rachel really summed it up well about what it's all I, like. I think, it, you know, it, some people might call it, let's say, a necessary evil, mm. and that is that, you know, we're dealing with people's health. And despite what we'd really like to say, I think there's a, a reason to have restrictions on certain disease states, for instance, even though some research might say that it's useful, the research on that exact product has not been done yet, like a pharmaceutical. Mm. So it's kind of like the a t- natural medicine industry has a topsy-turvy way of approaching it because it's based on um, safety rather than efficacy. Yeah. So with a pharmaceutical, it's a new molecule. It's a totally new molecule that we haven't really been exposed to in our humanity, in our human evolution. Mm. So those companies have got to provide safety data as well as showing that it actually has a a benefit to clinical disease states. Whereas when you're dealing with an egg (laughs) or a protein, we've grown up with these. So the safety is sort of like the main issue, whereas efficacy is something that's put to later. And then you might be able to register the product if you went through that process. So I, I I think that it's one of these necessary evils you've got to work within. We don't always necessarily like it, but I think it's got its purpose. Mm. Rachel, you mentioned about your experience about, uh, of going on the road with the sales representatives. Tell me about your time with those people and, and what you learned. 
Certainly. Well, yeah, I was on the road in Melbourne and uh, with the wonderful sales team down there. They're all absolutely incredible practitioners as well as, um, you know, representatives of bioceuticals. And uh, what we learnt through the, working with the um, the sales team was just about how to, um, you know, really connect with uh, practitioners and salespeople you know, as in store owners and whatnot, mm. and how important that education is. Um, they're not just selling a product, as I said earlier, you know, they're not just selling, you know, put this on your shelf. It's like, what is it that our market wants and, and how are we going to educate them? And Shannon? Mm, I think my time on the road also, it just gave us such insight into all the different types of practitioners out there and how each individual practitioner wants different things and, uh, you know, the questions. And it also showed us the demand for certain products in particular areas and how different that can be, yeah. you know, across the state. But it was an amazing experience and, yeah. Mm. I, I think one of the things that's important f for me when I used to be a... a, a sales rep, if you like, on the road, is that it, you can get one product and you can use it in so many different ways. And and sometimes a product will get pigeonholed because of its name or because of the flavour of the day of what that herb is used for. Like, for instance, one of my favourite of all herbs, kava. You know, it's now pigeonholed for anxiety. And I go, well, hang on, how about... Um, conditions with, where anxiety is a major component of that, like, for instance, irritable bowel syndrome, because kava has the double-edged action that it's also a smooth muscle relaxant. So it's a perfectly placed herb. Um, and it's interesting to me to sometimes, you know, give people a little bit of a shake and say, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, it's not so much broader than that. Um, Let's talk about the raw material sourcing, though, because, as you said, product formulation was a real huge um, learning curve and, and one where you had to put your smart caps on. So, Rachel, I'll start with you. Tell me what you learnt about raw material sour sourcing and the challenges facing companies. Well, that was actually an area that I was extremely interested in. And I probably actually feel that that was something I didn't get to learn a whole lot about. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to have really delved I'm really deeply into that yep. because I'm very, very curious, is it, you know, but but I know that Bioceuticals does place a high emphasis on sourcing, you know, sustainable um, ingredients mm. and um, and all that kind of stuff. But it really, yeah, it just shone light on um, how difficult it actually is. In our product, we, we had quite a few ingredients and um, a lot of them were used... Um, you know, quite readily within other products. Mm -hmm. So as far as looking into it, we already had things like quotes and whatnot. But, um, yeah, the, it's an area that I'm really interested in, though, mm. so I must say. Mm. Yeah, Shannon? Well, I think we just – it was – quite straightforward for us when we were sourcing our raw material because there were materials that had already been used by bioceuticals. Um, the dosages were in parameter parameters which were very realistic for us to get. Um, maybe cost was one setback mm -hmm. with certain things, certain herbs. But other than that, it just seemed, you know, relatively straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Rachel, is that when you've got a, a, a product with which has got so many ingredients in it, it becomes that much harder to source each one and maintain the cost um, aspect and keep it down so that it's affordable to the practitioner and indeed the patient. So it, it's a, I, I agree with you, the challenges that you would have faced there. <laughs> um, but all of this can't have been smooth sailing it can't have just been a nice easy waltz in and and a flow through tell me about particular challenges that you had or indeed you know negative experiences mm. rachel let's start with you certainly um well i'm uh, coming from victoria i guess that was probably my biggest challenge to start with because mm. i it is a self-funded internship so yep. i needed to get over here as well as taking two and a half months off work sure um so that was a big commitment but the way i see it is that this is an investment in my future as well and in the same way i pay for my education i'm paying for an opportunity to learn so that's that was you know um mm. one little thing for me um I think the other thing is just, you know, it wasn't a challenge at all, but it was just amazing how all-encompassing this internship was. It wasn't like rock up and just 
get the job done and go home. It was like this was on my mind. We were creating a brand new product. Yeah. So this was ticking over in my mind 24 hours a day. I think I was dreaming about ingredients. <laughs> I was, you know. Nightmares? <laughs> I remember one morning I came in and said to Shannon, Picnochno. <laughs> what is Picnochno? <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know. So, yeah. Um, but, no, brilliant. I mean, it's so nice to, to live and breathe it in that way. Mm. To, you know, when it's to be able to create a product. So how did you surmount the the challenge of moving up here for that period that we are, you were in the internship? What did you do? Um, I called on very kind friends yeah. who offered their couch and <laughs> yeah. spare rooms to me. Yeah. Um, I was lucky enough to, to just, I don't know, things actually were, it was very um, beautifully orchestrated the way things flowed. I feel like it was really meant to be. Mm-hmm. Things just worked out as far as even just, you know, yeah, like I said, accommodation, getting rides in. Um, just everything did work out for me. Mm. But, um, yeah, it, it was a challenge at first. Uh, that was probably my first feeling when I got it. It's like, all right, how am I logistically going to make this work? Yeah, but, yeah. You know, I think and that's would. a reasonable concern. You know, that's a, that's a big ask. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So well done to you. Shannon, what about you? Can't yeah. all have been smooth sailing? What happened? Um, yeah, so I think the ch- what, some of the challenging aspects of the internship were here I am, a student, um, you know, working my way through college, living out of home, and I had these two months which I had to dedicate to a full-time job that, you know, was all for my education. Mm. Like Rachel said, it was unpaid, so it was really just about the passion and, and coming in for the experience. And, you know, you came in really early every day. You worked really, really hard throughout the day researching, um, learning about all the different aspects of bioceuticals. And then you would come home at night and think about things and research outside and go to bed late and wake up extra early. And, mm. you know, you never shut off. And I guess that shows the passion. And I think... You know, I definitely saw this as something that, even though it was a really difficult two months, it was only two months and it was going to be exciting and there was never going to be a time in my life that I was going to be able to, you know, like hit the floor running with such an incredible company. And, and so, might I say an incredible team. And an, young in, yeah, and an incredible team. And that's the thing, you know, there were tough days. There were days that we wanted to rip our hair out. You know, there were days that we had to step outside for breathers. But if it wasn't for the incredible team at Bioceuticals, the staff, the other interns, you know, we really, yeah, it could have, it could have been a lot more challenging. So, so tell me about those times when you wanted to tear your hair out. <laughs> Hopefully it was your own. <laughs> <laughs> Not somebody else's. Yeah. But tell me what happened. What was that about? What what sort of things I think a, up? a lot of those moments came down to research, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, trying to find claims for our product and coming up with incredible research. But because the, you know, the parameters, the policies were so, so strict, we just would have setback after setback. And I remember with Rachel and I, there was a moment where we, in a flustered moment, we thought, oh, my gosh, we're going to have to completely change our product but you know we came together and we spoke it through and we both had breathers and you know just brought things back together so but you also completed a full education and training on these products that you formulated as well and i gotta say i I will always remember you guys presenting your product to me i was seriously blinking back tears i was so impressed oh thanks (laughs) tell me about your experiences here what did you learn you come from marketing but media background and you we were you comfortable with that shannon were you comfortable with the presentation side well the thing is you know i'm i'm really not a public speaker at all i i can speak to a group of people but when, when it really comes up uh, comes to standing up in front of people, being put on the spot, having to really discuss things. It's, you know, I find it a bit challenging. Maybe yeah. there you go. There was a yeah. challenge for me. So, yeah. you know, I really learned a lot with that and, and you know, I had a great partner who really, you know, supported me in, in that challenge. Mm. But um, I think, you know, we both together learned a lot about marketing that's involved and how to sell a product because we were ultimately selling our new product to the bioceuticals team the people who knew everything there was to know about ingredients and yeah mm. rachel how about you um i think it's it one of the major challenges was really just continuing with the big picture as well as the detail because there's so much you know intricate details involved with creating a product 
and it's maintaining that vision and um, and never losing sight of that because it's you know we we came up with this broad concept and knew what we wanted to do but then yeah really breaking it down into manageable pieces and in a very very tight time frame because mm. really the first was it four weeks was spent really just getting to know the company and spending time learning about the you know the intricacies of the of the business and then now it's your turn kind yeah. of thing like now you guys are on your own you're going to you. do this <laughs> and um yeah it's kind of like sink or swim but i think you know the thing is we knew the support was there. We just had to ask for help when we needed it. Yep. And, you know, we, yeah, like I said, like Shannon said, um, you know, we, we had a great team that we could really bounce off each other's strengths. Like Shannon was so strong with, you know, the research, you know, really incredible. I just had to, you know. <laughs> and, you know, my, I, I was really enjoying the the marketing side of things yep. and which drew on my past experiences. So, you know, for example, these, so we found our strengths and, and worked with them and, yeah, came together and, did it brilliantly executed at the end so what advice would you give to future students and uh, practitioners indeed who wanted to apply for the internship i would say definitely just do it it's it's you know i think people say that being a student you know they look back and they say it was the best time of their life and i think it's because you know they they do forget that you know at times when we're working full time and and we're, we're kind of consumed with other things whereas to just come in and really focus on an experience and to take that opportunity um and, and i mean of course this is going to give us so much amazing experience that we will carry into our future careers and you know i think that's invaluable so i'd say to anyone considering it definitely you've got to go for it mm, good on you rachel well done shannon yeah and i'd say as well you know no matter where your path has been no matter who you are no matter how old you are or where you come from or if you're an academic or not you know it's just work experience is so vital to your education and to your practice or just to your future that I would say just follow your dreams and follow your passions and you know just do it you know just don't question yourself because you just have no idea how much you can take from something or how much you can learn and I can honestly say that I learnt more in two months being with bioceuticals than I have you know in any other bit of work experience I've maybe taken on yeah so just do it just do it like Nike says just do <laughs> it <laughs> gotta be in it to win it well I gotta say you know after meeting you and the the other interns I was just so impressed with what you guys brought to bioceuticals, you know, par excellence. You know, as I said, I was blinking back tears when doing your presentation. I was just so overwhelmed with how professional and attention to detail was, was given to every facet from product development to raw materials to, to formulation to education to marketing to the final presentation. It was just excellent. We're overawed. Oh, I'm so overly impressed so with you. So thank you for being the first and inaugural um, interns uh, with, with the Bio Bioceuticals Internship Program. So Shannon, Rachel, thank you so much for coming in and ex um, sharing your experiences about the internship program. And I hope the, the listeners out there, the st current students and, and future practitioners, um, learn something and... Uh, when and if they find it's applicable for them, please do apply for the Bioceuticals Internship Program. Well, thank you very much. It's been a great being here with you. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been a wonderful opportunity to participate in the internship and we're very grateful. This is FX Radio and I'm Andrew Whitfield-Cook.